So we're going to start uh, talking about inductors today. And in fact, we can finish all of inductors in, in one video. That is, the things we need to know before we get to transient analysis, which will be next unit. And inductors store energy in a magnetic field. So whereas the capacitor stored energy in the electrical field, inductors store energy in magnetic field. And actually, commonly, the way they're, they're created is in, uh, as coils of wires. So we know that we can make a, uh, an electromagnet uh, out of a coil of wire. And so a, um, an inductor actually is just a, a coil of wire typically wrapped around some kind of a core, uh, which explains why their circuit element is given like this. So it looks more or less like a coil of wire. They are passive elements as well. So if I have I of t entering this way, then I will say that the positive terminal is there, the negative is there, and that's V of t. Okay, so much like every other passive element, positive current enters the positive terminal. Now, like I said, they are just coils of wire, which means that if left to their own devices, if I of t is constant, then they act like a wire. There's nothing special. Inductors, though, what they do is they respond to a changing current. And in fact, the relationship between V and T in an inductor is that V of T is equal to L di dt. So this is what we might call the fundamental equation of an inductor. Much like with a capacitor, it was I equals C dV dt. The inductor is the dual of that in a, in a certain sense in that the voltage is now related to the derivative of the current. L is called our inductance, and it is given in the unit of Henry's, which is a little bit of a strange unit, but let's talk about it. So one Henry is equal to one volt second per amp. So a volt second per amp is what we might consider to be just a time dependent um, unit Right, there's seconds involved, uh, current, and voltage as well. So we can solve the fundamental equation for the current. We can integrate, basically. And what we end up with is I of t is equal to 1 over L times the integral of t naught to t v of t dt. Right, so all I did there was I integrated um, the inductor. So now that we know the current and the voltage, we can start developing expressions for the power, which is the, basically what we did for the capacitance. So let's take a look. Remembering that P is V of T, I of T. And remembering that V is L di dt, what we have is L I di dt for the power. We can now integrate this so we can get the energy, which is really what we want. Remember, it's an energy storage element. And so what we end up with is that the energy is L times the integral from t naught to t of this power expression here, I of t di dt dt, which is going to give us L integral now I of t naught, remember all I'm doing here is just changing what's inside the integral, I of t dt, which eventually says that energy is 1 half L I of t all squared. So much like in a capacitor, we've had some, something extremely similar, actually 1 half CV squared. In an inductor, we have one half L I squared. So they're they are called dual elements, and they're called that for a reason. Everything a capacitor does with voltage, a inductor does with current. Now that being the case, what that's going to mean is that when we start developing the expressions for the inductances in series and parallel, we're going to have essentially a dual relationship there as well. So to give you a little bit of a of a spoiler, what we're going to go into now, talking about inductance in series in parallel, we're actually going to see that we have that dual relationship. So let's take a look. Starting with series. Oh, sorry about that. I think my pen just had an issue. So let's say that I have three inductors. 
there is V of t across the whole series connection of them, and I of t is the same in all three. I can use KVL and I know that V of t is L1 di dt plus L2 di dt plus L3 di dt. So this is just using it as a series connection. And as you can see, the di dt is the same in all three expressions. I can take that out. So V of t is L1 plus L2 plus L3 di dt. And this looks very similar to the fundamental inductance equation with the only ex exception being that this is now a sum of inductors or LEQ. And so um, what we end up with is that LEQ in series is the sum i is 1 to n, where n is the number of inductors I have of Li. And the takeaway is inductors in series add like resistors. Okay, so inductors and resistors in series uh, have the same adding properties. Now let's look at what happens in parallel. And what we have, so now V of t is the same, whereas I of t is going to be different. Call that L1 and L2. I have a total current coming in and it splits off into I1 and I2. So L1 di1 by dt equals to L2 di2 by dt. Remember they have the same voltage so their voltages will be uh, equatable and therefore I can I can write this down and that's going to equal to V of t And if you remember, this is going to give us that I1 is 1 over L1 times the integral from T0 to T. Typically, we might just call T0 0 to make our integration a little bit easier to write down. V of T dt. And uh, very, very similarly, I2, 1 over L2, integral 0 to T v of t dt. We can now use KCL and we know that I, our total current, is I1 plus I2, which eventually will give us 1 over L1 plus 1 over L2 integral 0 to t v of t dt. This is our equivalent inductance, which is given as the sum i equals 1 to n of 1 over Li inverted. Inductors in parallel, so use a little bit of shorthand here, add like resistors in parallel. So the key takeaway there is that if you ever want to remember the formulas for uh, capacitors and inductors in series in parallel, inductors add just like resistors do. Capacitors flip that. So rather than adding up nicely in series, they add up nicely in parallel. As long as you can remember that inductors, which are essentially just wires, act like resistors, which are just wires with more resistance, and that the capacitors are the opposite, you should be good to go. Other than that, that concludes everything we can talk about really about inductors until we get into something called transient analysis. So in the very beginning of this unit, I talked about the fact that energy storage elements are time dependent. It takes a while for them to charge and to discharge. In the next unit, we'll be talking all about that and how we can deal with that time and use it to our advantage.